Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to be talking about mammoths. I got uh, tagged in a discussion video from Shelley Swearingen. Uh, that was a uh, reaction, I guess, to Criminali's um, uh, Are Books or Mammoths Too Long or Books Too Long type video, um, where he had people get the last 10 books that they read and see how many they can hold in their hands. So I have the last 10 books, well, uh, 10 books. I have a whole bunch of digital and audio in there and I can't even hold them all. Oh no. Um, in the end, I think I can hold this many comfortably, which would be three, six, seven of them. And not all of them are the last 10, but they're sort of the average book length that you would expect, especially when contrasting them to the Mammoth's books. And then how many of the last Mammoth's one can you pick up? So I'm currently reading Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And I finished Magic Mountain and JR recently. And yeah, I can fit those three in there barely. Um, so those three equate to the, you know, roughly equate to the seven books, I suppose. And would I rather have that experience or the large experience? Um, the answer is a little bit more complex because, for instance, what if I want to hold three books in my hand span that are also kind of <laughs> pivotal works, you know? So do I want to read seven books that I thought were quite good or do I want to read actual formative books that people say are the best books in the world, basically, like all-time best books, formative, transformative experiences. Um, another way of looking at it is instead of reading those seven books, I could have just read these. And of course, it also doesn't take into account the GSM, uh, like the thickness of the pages. My Ulysses is, is tiny, but it's a huge amount of pages. Uh, I also read War and Peace this year and Don Quixote, both of which are mammoths and both of which I didn't particularly enjoy reading, but still enjoyed in other ways, like the meta components, the craft, the writing. And it also, I feel, situates me into like a, the cultural general intellect about those books. Um, I mean, right after consuming War and Peace, three or four of the books that I did read were in conversation to some degree with those books because they reference them, uh, either the characters or the um, author themselves or something like that. And so if I consume a major piece, um, even, you know, these mammoths that people are intimidated by, then it, I get something more out of it than just the one experience, arguably as well, because I also get the general intellect surrounding it and I get to be situated in the conversation, I get to participate in the conversation, I get the intertextuality of understanding those books with um, in relation to every other book that I consume going forward, right? So if I read, for instance, Ulysses um, tomorrow or whatever, how many books have I read have mentioned, alluded to, used the structure of Ulysses uh, probably a lot, uh, probably many that I'm not even aware of because I only vaguely am aware of the actual structure of L Ulysses. So uh, reading formative works is, you know, much more enriching arguably than contemporary works that haven't lasted the test of time. If you want, if you're interested in that kind of conversation, if you're interested more in low cognitive load um, and having a fun time, then it would be against your interest <laughs> to pick up those kind of books, right? Um, but yeah, it's interesting because I think that when you hold up the seven books, you're also proving that in the, the last 10 books that I read, I could grab seven of them and then also just say that I can make a huge dent in my collection and read these huge books that are really intimidating. Um, but I, I read the equivalent of them in X amount of time for me, a very short amount of time. Like last week I read 11 books. That means I could read like a mammoth every week, right? 
and I don't do that, but I do read a, generally a big book every two weeks or so, I think is about correct. Um, so my reading experience is very different than most people. I read a lot. I work from home. I'm a writer, and so I kind of think of reading as work as well. Like I'm, whether it's contemporary or classic or mammoth or novella, I kind of think of it all as going on the compost heap of my brain and helping me dissect my own craft and help me in my own writing, enriching my experience in that way. Um, and then I also, like I said, get situated in the, the um, general intellect, whether I'm participating in prize, prize discussions or classic discussions or the intertextuality. Um, there's just so much to choose from that. I think it's just a, a preference, basically. It's, it's very difficult to know, I think, what kind of reader you are if you don't consume maximalist efforts like these mammoths, you know? Um, if you never give these a shot, if you never give Ulysses a shot, Magic Mountain, incredible read, uh, War and Peace a shot, then you also don't have a counterpoint for reading the short books and knowing what you like as well. Um, they're much different in structure and the way that you consume it, the way that you digest it, and the way that you even talk about them is very different. The, the entire conversation is different. You're actually having a different conversation, I think, right? So I think um, it's there's no one right answer, which I think is probably what everybody has said about this discussion sort of tag thing already. And uh, so I guess I'm just doubling down on that. But I really like the idea of holding it in your hand so that it's just like the opposite uh, occurred to me, essentially. I think that it occurred to Ollie where it was like, would you rather read eight books? Or I'm like, and I'm thinking, oh, I could have read Ulysses and <laughs> I could have read Proust and I could have read, you know, uh, The Recognitions and I could have read such and such, like A Suitable Boy. I have that on my TBR forever. Um, one of the tags that I did early on a year ago was uh, Intimidating Books or I can't remember what the tag was called, but I think it was the um, kick the bucket tag or something, bucket list tag. And all of those were just huge books that were intimidating. And really, if you contrast them and just stack them right up to the what you're reading already, at least in my case, um, you know, it's not so intimidating anymore, which is nice. <laughs> and so maybe I'll pick up a bigger book earlier on. I'd like to take bigger bites out of the pie, I guess, of the mammoths that I have um, and get them done. But another thing that I really like when thinking about size and relation in my shelf is that if I pick up a mammoth and I read it, you know, generally it'll only take me three or four days just because of the speed that I read at. Even if it takes me a week, whatever, um, it does feel really nice um, having that chunk out of my TBR shelf and moving it to my completed read shelf. Um, it feels like a big substantial thing. As um, And then it also works on all those other positives that I mentioned. So, I don't know. Um, I find both experiences to be different and I've read so many that I kind of just know when I'm in a place to take up whichever book. Um, you know, I'm a mood reader, so I just pick up whatever I think. The general size of it only comes into uh, account when it's quite large, um, even bigger than I think most mammoths are like codified as, like 800 pages. 800 pages to me is like a decent fantasy novel, basically. So I think I've just been sort of desensitized from that, from reading those types of books earlier on in my reading life. Um, but then for some reason, the extra 200, 300 pages on top of that, that's when I'm kind of like, oh, this is a lot. And then of course, literary fiction will generally be a little bit more intense and higher cognitive load than your average fantasy read, right? Which will be a, a fun romp, basically. So yeah, I don't know if I've contributed much to this conversation, but I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> if you have thoughts about this, feel free to put them in, in the comments. I'd love to hear 
everyone's opinions. And um, otherwise, I will see you next video. Bye.